Dear organizer and the learned uh, participants, Assalamu alaikum and very good day to both everybody. This is uh, Professor Dr. Fatima Asha, working as head of the department in the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology at Shud Samwati Medical College and Hospital, that is a tertiary level hospital at Dhaka, Bangladesh. Uh, I would like to pay my uh, heartiest thanks to the organizers at the outset for enabling such a uh, virtual conference in the midst of uh, COVID pandemic, which is really very uh, new to our thinking. So today we'll talk about uh, the very initial steps of research. So what is research? We all know that if we uh, talk about research in, a, in an easier way, it's the systematic collection, analysis, and interpretation of data to answer certain questions or to solve a problem. So what is research approach? Research approach are the plan and the procedures for research that is span the steps from broad assumption to detailed methods of data collection, analysis, and interpretation. So there are a few steps of research work that we should follow <coughs> to have a good research outcome. First of all, actually the research starts with identification of a problem. So many times people say that I want to go for some research work, but I don't know how to start. So for those, first of all, you have to identify a problem. And then about the problem, we have to gather enough knowledge about the existing um, activity, ex existing work which has been done in different um, stages. And they will collect enough uh, information by going through the literatures. So we have to go to literature review. Then after literature review, we'll develop some problem statements about the problem. Then we'll state a research question formulate some objectives, and if needed, we'll formulate hypothesis. So then we have to select the research design and methodology which will fit most with, uh, with this research activity. That is, the design or methodology will be selected um, which one fit most to have a good uh, answering of the research question. And that includes type of study design, selection of variables, sample size estimation, sampling techniques, and so on. Then we will have to develop data, data collection instrument, data collection uh, processing, data analysis, interpretation of findings, and then writing a research report, which is actually the, uh, the sum up of the whole research work. And then the last one is the dissemination of research findings. So including all these are part of research activity. Now the first point that was problem identification. So we have to know which one is my problem which I want to solve. And this is the initiation of the research one. So problem identification uh, can, be, uh, can, can be done on the basis of the principle between the expected and the actual situation to test. So the actual meaning of problem in research is that I, I am in an existing condition and I might have a better one. So I want to um, I want to achieve the better one. That is my question is how can I achieve that one? That is the problem. So it is the difference between the existing one and the expected one. That is the problem. And this discrepancy between these two raises the question. So that is the research question. What actually one to be? Then there are more than one possible answers to the question that I need to find out through, through my research work. So before selecting a research problem, there's, there might be many problems, but with which one I want to go with the research activity, 
will on to fit the research problem on the basis of some selective criteria like relevance of the work with my uh, um, present situation avoidance of duplication that means in the literature review you can see that similar work has been done even in my country in my city so why would i should go for another research work by wasting some money or time or expertise so i should avoid if the research has already been done then the feasibility whether it is feasible or not because research needs time it needs money it needs expertise so many things so whether it is feasible or not all still is that then the political acceptability also is very important applicability why should i do the research if it is not applicable to any further Uh, development of the clinical setting or anywhere else. So application of the research work should be found during selection of the program. Urgency of data needed and the ethical acceptability, which is also very important. So during literature review, we should know what type of literature I need to evaluate for my research work. The literature may be primary type, the materials are primary that is originated by original research reports there may be interviews with experts census report like this and there may be secondary type of um, uh, research works like review articles encyclopedia there may be a tertiary get also examples from textbooks after literature review we have to develop the problem statements and the problem statements should include magnitude of the problem that is the rational of my research work why i am doing this research work in spite of many other problems then uh, it should include the time distribution place distribution and person distribution and from the literature we need to know what are the probable reasons of this problem which i want to be answer to my research work and has any attempt is made to solve the problem in the past so all these informations will collect from the literature and from those um, extensive uh, information will sum up to a problem statement if the problem is previously has been attempted to solve what results were obtained and what remains to be solved that is a very good question after literature review that what it means to be so if you go through any research work in the say like in a published article you can see that at the end of any research work commonly they they mention or the, uh, they uh, order that uh, uh, something more to be done here is the gap or here is the research work is incomplete so something more to be done this is the recommendation for from uh, any research work and that is to be solved by another research that can be solved by another research so my research can start when another one's research ended from that point my research can be can be initiated now there should be question the question arises from the problem so it must be a specific one and the research questions for which the researcher seeks answer to this research can be one question can be more than one research question during uh, uh, during formulation of research question the phrasing of research question is very important because it determines the research design to be selected for example uh, my research question might um, might be like that i want to know the maternal and fetal outcome following a premature rupture of fetal membrane so i want to know the outcome or i want to know what are the risk factors that is related to premature rupture of membrane so the, the two question may be uh, generally can be maybe may think may be similar but in, uh, in the, on the aspect of research they are quite different in the first one when to know the outcome maternal and fetal outcome of the mature rupture of membrane so the uh, design uh, will be a cross sectional study design but if i want to know the these factors then the design will be a 
uh, designer is about to study. So there is phrasing of research question is very important. What I want to mean by this research question that is very important to know. Now the research objectives. After a research question, I have to formulate the research objectives. The research objective actually summarize what is to be achieved by the study. So if you want to go through an article, you have to go first to the research objectives to know actually on what steps, on what points the research activity was done. The research objective actually changes with the research question. What I want to know that is very important. Now, there could be one or two general objectives and others are specific objectives. So the objectives can be stated into two ways, either in general objective or a specific objective. Sometimes someone may use the ultimate objective. Now, during formulation of objective, you have to use the action verbs. So the action verbs, examples of action verbs are like this, to assess, to determine, to estimate. And uh, before a formulation of action verbs, you need to know the that, that should be a measurable one. Uh, so it, the action verbs like, might be like this, that we could uh, stated like to compare, to verify, to establish. So we can compare between two drugs or uh, two uh, diagnostic aids. Like we can compare for cancer service screening between uh, visual inspection of service with acidic acid with the gold standard of cancer service screening method to passes here. So my, um, if I want to see that which one is better in our setting, say we want to say that the uh, higher, I am is visual inspection of uh, service with acidic acid. We can uh, have a topic like this, a problem like this, higher is a better means uh, for cancer service is putting in our setting. So our setting means when we are resource poor, our setting means we are uh, poor in experts like pepsismia needs cytopathologists, but I does not need those experts. So my topic is like this. And when I want to formulate general ob objectives, I can say that my general objective is to compare the uh, effectiveness of the higher uh, versus sepsis mirror as a gold standard of cancer service screening method. This is my general objective. And then we have to formulate a specific objective. So from the examples, we can now uh, come to say that general objective is a short statement that tells us in summary from what will be done in the study. And commonly, we actually use an action part with topic or the title, and we make our general objective. Like if uh, my topic is nutritional status of under five children of slums in Bangladesh, my general objective would be to assess the nutritional status of under five children of slums. Now I have to achieve these general objectives to some specific objectives. So a specific objectives is states the state of tasks undertaken during this such work to achieve the general objectives. For example, it might be in, in this case where my general objective is to assess the nutritional status of under children of slums in Bangladesh. These specific objectives might be to assess the socio-demographic characteristics of under children. You see, in every study, whether we mention in the specific objective or not, everywhere that this this component must be included in, a object, in the objective of a research work that is the socio demographic characteristic of the participant or the respondents of the research uh, work. Because what has already um, done, or what has already done, uh, is done. But uh, why I am doing this research? I want to apply my result in another population. Say the uh, premature rupture membrane and the outcome, maternal and fetal outcome, has already done. But 
from this research work, I want to apply my results over another population or another people to have a better clinical outcome. So when I want to apply my research results uh, on another population, they must match with each other by their sociodemographic characteristics. For example, if I do a research one, uh, work on Islam area, that result might not be applied on the uh, population of higher, uh, higher uh, socioeconomic uh, population that might not be applicable. That's why this is for the generalizability or external validity of the research work. We need to put this point, sociodemographic characteristic, in each of the research activities. So this is common for all specific objectives, whether you give it in the first point or you give it in the last point that must be incorporated. Okay, now the second point is, second objective is to find out the weight for days of under five children. As you know that I will, um, will calculate the nutritional status of the under five children by calculating their weight against height. So I have to assess or determine the weight of the under five children. Here is the, the objective must be a measurable one and it must be a specific one. So uh, it must not be in a descriptive form. So we must assess the weight. And now how this weight can be measured in which machine, that is the part of methodology section, okay? Then we have to find out the height for youth of under five children. So all the specific objectives in total will solve the, uh, or will answer the question of general objective. Then we have to formulate the hypothesis. Commonly for this research work, there must be a research question because it is originated from the problem. And we must be very much specific during formulating research question. So hypothesis is not, not always needed in research work, in all types of research work. But when it is a analytic research, then hypothesis must be there. So sometimes you can, you can hear the uh, statement that uh, some research are hypothesis generating research. So from some descriptive studies, where we need to go for, need not to go for uh, analysis. We only uh, only uh, display the uh, descriptive form of the study, and from those descriptions, it is to formulate the hypothesis generation. That is, some new uh, study should be done with analysis, and that needs a hypothesis. So, hypothesis formulation is not always needed especially in this particular form of studies. Now, the hypothesis is a prediction of relationship between one or more variables and the problem under study. Say, for ex example, we can say that uh, in gestational diabetes mellitus, patient empowerment is a better option for um, effective management of gestational diabetes management. So we are going to see the relationship that whether we can have a better clinical outcome if we manage the gestational diabetic patients with empowering the patient herself. So we want to see this relationship whether patient empowerment actually is more effective for managing gestational diabetes malaria. So here we need to see the relationship. Now, is it clear to you that what, what hypothesis actually mean or how hypothesis can be developed? So what is my hypothesis that should be tested, whether it is accepted or not accepted. Hypothesis is not for proof. So what I get from my research, that is all. That's why you have to know that null hypothesis, alternative hypothesis might be, but today I want to discuss on those measures. Now, for my research approach, I need to select the research design, and during selection of research design, I must be particular with my problem, my topic, 
what will be solved in which type of design mostly. So the research designs might be qualitative research, quantitative research, and mixed methods research means both qualitative and quantitative research part is there. Now, first of all, we can talk about the qualitative research. So qualitative research involves the identification of a number of variables that give insight into the nature and cause of certain problems. So you should keep in mind how much you want to explore, how much deeper you want to go to the problem. Accordingly, your approach will be to select either qualitative research or quantitative research. I want to know the quantitative amount of the research problem, then it is quantitative research. But if I think I want to probe more deeper, then I should select the qualitative research. So the approach to the research design is a very important one, and everything is related to my research question, how much deeper I want to go. So qualitative research, uh, in qualitative research, we can solve the problem commonly related to behavior, social, and cultural aspect that can be investigated by this research method. So if you want to see the uh, practice of hand wash in a community, then if we go for quantitative research, I can only say how many people in a community is uh, washing hands. But if I want to know why such percentage, say like 20% of the people, they are aware about the hand washing and they are practicing that. But if I want to know why so few people are doing hand washing, why no more? Then I have to go deeper to the question, why it is happening? What, is, what are the uh, challenges behind this? Why it is not 80%, why it is not 60%, why it is 20%? then I have to choose qualitative research. Now, there are uh, various methods or types of qualitative research, like participatory observation. From the participatory observation, you can see, even in a tertiary level hospital, where there are operative facilities, someone want to know whether the doctors being aware of the importance of hand washing, are they practicing? Are they practicing the steps of hand washing? So you make a research paper, uh, a research proposal, you go to the uh, OT washroom, washroom area, and then just observe how many percentage of uh, qualified doctors, because they are qualified doctors, they are going for operation, they are the experts. So how many of the qualified doctors actually they are doing the right things? They are fulfilling the six steps. They are maintaining the hand washing for three minutes. How many? How frequently? Then that will be a participatory observation. And from that, we can do that. Then we can have a focus group discussion with few people, like six to 10 people in a group, in a homogeneous group, having same age, from the same community, from the same perception. You can say that of this the uh, deeper thoughts of not doing the right one. So from the focus group discussion, we can take some information or we can collect data for qualitative research or we can collect data for qualitative research to in-depth interview that is a by person interview. Then we can go to some people's study. Now, the qualitative research process involves emerging questions and procedures. There is no prefix questions during data collection the questions will emerge. Say someone said that we can go for uh, hand wash regularly because the water source is far away from every household. We have to go far to collect water and go for hand washing. So the question emerged. So there is a problem that um, the uh, water source is far away. Why? Uh, because um, the another why the, it, is that if in every household the water source is far away? No, no, the water source means the tubal water is far away, but we have uh, waters in our buckets, but we don't want 
to wash our hands with bucket water because that might be mixed with some waste materials. So in such a way, the questions emerge and then we'll go on with the qualitative research with the focus on my target, which I want to actually. So it is the um, responsibility of a uh, researcher who is engaged with qualitative research to focus on uh, his uh, or her target and to um, go deeper and deeper with the emerging questions. So there is no fixed questions like the quantitative study. And data collection will be in the participants setting. That is very important because in participant setting, they are commonly very much free to talk uh, about their problems and how they perceive they want to share those uh, easily. So it is important to collect data from the participants. Then data analysis will be done inductively, building from particular general themes. So after some conversation or discussion, some general themes will arise and uh, it only comes from the statement of the participants, not like that, sometimes with body language. So the uh, note takers will take everything during the discussion to have a better uh, perception about the problem of the study. And at the end, the research chart will interpret this into the data. Those who engage in this form of inquiry support a way of looking at research that honors an inductive style, we focus on individual meeting and the importance of rendering the complexity of the situation. So here the individual or a group perception is very important and that is honored and the information is collected. And the final report has a flexible structure so that in the final report, the researcher will mention the general theme that is um, collected from the participants or respondents and uh, the, their expression. The, the uh, report will be written on the basis of the expression of the respondents and their perception that uh, will be mentioned, quoting that someone stated like this, someone is stated like this. In a flexible structure, the report will be written for qualitative research. But what is commonly done in your setting is quantitative research, and mostly people are well acquainted with quantitative research. So quantitative researchers are used to quantify the size, distribution, and association of certain variables in a study. Now, the quantitative research is an approach for testing objectives by examining the relationship among variables. These variables can be measured typically on instruments, so like we want to measure the weight of the under five children. So I am using a weight machine here, and I have to mention which weight machine is I, um, I am using for measuring the weight of the children. Then the number data, so I will gather some number data that can be analyzed using statistical procedures. The final, and for the final report, we have to formulate a set of a structure, like in the final report, there will be introduction to the topic, then what I, or was my finding from the literature, uh, the method which I adopted for this research was one, the design, and then what results I have uh, found from my study, and then I'll have a discussion on it. Um, and uh, during discussion, I'll compare my um, my proposed um, study, not proposed study, already completed, and then we'll go for discussion. So in the discussion, we'll compare my study with those of the others. So whether there is any disparity or we are in the alignment of other studies, that will be discussed in the discussion setting, and then that will be sent for publication. Those who engage in the form of inquiry have assumption about testing theories deductively. So from the literature review, I have an assumption that what might be my finding, that might not be true, but I have some assumption. Like uh, say, if we go for um, a comparison, or we want to see the outcome of vaginal birth after cesarean section, from the literature review, I have some assumptions that 
there might be for following cesarean section if i allow vaginal delivery there is chance of rupture of uterus there is chance of fetal distress or fetal hypoxia if some threatening condition appears so i have some assumptions on the basis of that assumptions i include those things in my study objectives and then i'll find out whether those uh, what is the actual situation then uh, we have to build in protection against bias for uh, this study i have to formulate the proposal in such a way that my study will be less threatening threatened with the bias like that if we want to go for a research work saying that um, uh, smoking favors lung cancer this is my study so or i can say that the i want to know the risk factors of lung cancer so i have to know what are the probable or potential factors responsible for lung cancer so smoking might be one of them is family history like this now if i want to see the relationship of smoking with lung cancer i want to know whether is is a biased factor there or not say in my case group or the lung, among the lung cancer patients they all uh, they all are uh, a bit aged say from 60 to 70 years of age but in control group where they are not less smoker or not smoking in those group in that control group the age are like 25 30 35 years so there is a chance of bias as because in my case group people are mostly aged group and in such i have to control the bias so how can i control this bias if i mention during patient selection the s population should be within this to this then i can control the bias otherwise i can go for specification of the ss during my stuff during my analysis so it is very important to control the bias now controlling for alternative explanation and being to able to generalize and replicate the findings that is also very important because i want to apply my study result to other population if i see that 60 to 70% of the patient the pregnant mothers who have one previous cesarean section in 70% of cases they can have a vaginal birth so i need to apply this research work in another group of a pregnant population who desires for vaginal birth following one cesarean section now if i went for uh, my study if i went uh, on the respondents uh, of second gravida but i am applying my result on the respondents in a new study like that they are multi gravida they are like four or more grand multi gravida then my safety of my result that is 70% have said had said vaginal delivery might not be in case of those new population who are grand multiparas because you know that grand multiparas has more chance of rupture even they are not operated previously that's why this generalizability will be threatened if i am not aware and not specific during formulation of my research proposal and to apply or to replicate the findings later on so these are these are very important part of research approach now there may be mixed methods research there's an approach to inquiry involving collection both quantitative and qualitative data integrating the two forms of data and using this design that may involve philosophical assumption and theoretical framework so sometimes mixed method research is very important to know if my research question or my hypothesis suggests like this that i need to know both the quantitative and quantitative a uh, qualitative design to answer my problem or to solve my problem the core assumption of mixed method in quality is that the combination of qualitative and quantitative approach provides more complete understanding that is very important 
more complete understanding of Easter's problem than either any type of Easter's alone. Now, we come to the quantitative research. So quantitative research may be in two forms, like observational studies and the interventional studies. So you have to see that there are different forms of uh, observational and interventional studies. The observational studies, here the researcher describes and analyzes the research problem, but does not intervene. So it is occurring automatically and the researcher is not intervening by any means. These forms may be descriptive or analytic. Descriptive means only description is there, like in cross-sectional descriptive study and longitudinal study. Sometimes cross-sectional study may be analytic one. So you can in, in, uh, see cross-sectional study both in descriptive form and in analytic form. The analytic studies are case compulsory good study. So when you come to know about the study design, you know vividly about these uh, different forms and you know, how, uh, how they act, how can we select uh, any form of um, research study for which research problem like this. And some are interventional studies. So in the interventional study, the subject manipulates the situation and measures the outcome of this manipulation or intervention. So, but I have said that um, relationship of, uh, I want to see the relationship of, um, a relationship of uh, smoking with uh, cancer that I want to know. Now, uh, people are getting um, uh, smoking by cancer. So I am just observing the findings. I'm not manipulating this one. But if I want to manipulate, I'll select people, I'll give them uh, intervention like you will smoke and someone I'll say you will not smoke. So here I am manipulating. In, in this uh, case, the uh, researcher have a right to intervene in interventional study. For example, people are taking antihypertensive drugs and I want to see the, the efficacy of a newer drug than the traditional one. I am not intervening. I am just uh, observing what is going on between the calcium channel blocker, who are getting calcium channel blocker and who are getting the ARP. I'm just uh, want to see the difference of outcome. This is observational study. But if I want to see, uh, go through an interventional study, say a newer drug I want to compare with the conventional one, then the researcher will keep to the case to the um, newer drug and to the control group, they will give the placebo or the traditional drug. So here, the researcher is interviewed. Now, for the descriptive study that discusses health problem in terms of magnitudes, distribution time, place, and personal, you need to know much about all the study design. I will not uh, talk much about that today. The analytic study attempts to establish the cause or risk factor for certain problems. So if I want to see actually the risk factors for premature rupture of women, that will be an analytic study. I will not be able to say the risk factors by, by choosing the um, uh, descriptive study, descriptive method of study. I will not be able to say that. So phrasing, research question, and then selecting the design is very important. And in the analytic study, there must be two groups. So that you can compare the case group with the control group, how much it is effective or effective. So case control study, in the case control study, the researcher compares the cases with the control. Cases mean those who have the outcome. So here in case control study, the direction of the study is from outcome to um, exposure. Say, I want to see the um, these factors of type 2 diabetes mellitus. So who will be my guess? Outcome will be my guess. Here my study population is diabetes type 2 population who are suffering from say long, more than 10 years like this. Now they are my cases because already outcome has happened. And then I'll take the mass controls who are of similar age, uh, similar education, similar um, working environment, or similar um, um, like um, 
occupation like this. Now, in the control group, they are not diabetic. So and now I want to see the lifestyle, how much they are working, how much they are sedentary workers, how much they are going for physical exercise like this. And only then I can tell the uh, relationship between two factors, like the uh, risk factors of diabetes is related to physical uh, inability or uh, lack of physical exercise or sedentary workers like this. I want to make some relationship between the variables of sedentary workers with diabetes but through a case control study. So that is how actually it happens. And here, the duration of inquiry is from outcome to exposure. So I first select the case that is my outcome. Then I'll go back to all the potential risk factors like genetics, like family history, like uh, sedentary workers. So in the control group, everything will be matched. There will be family history positive. There will be uh, any other thing positive. Only difference will be there in the control group. They are the exercising group and the case group. They are some different types like this. Two cases who have the controls are who do not have the problem under the study and the study determines the factors that are responsible for the study problem. Now you can see about the cohort study with single statement. You can say that cohort study in cohort study the uh, query is for direction of query is from exposure to outcome. You see, from exposure to outcome. So now I'm saying that the sedentary workers are more prone to develop type 2 diabetes mellitus. So I'll uh, take the case group who are sedentary workers. I'll take the control group matching who are not sedentary workers. And after 10 years, after five years, I want to see among these two groups who are more who, from those groups who are more frequent to develop the type 2 diabetes mellitus. So some people from the case group will develop type 2 uh, diabetes, some people from the control group also will get the type 2 diabetes. And how much frequently the case group are uh, developing type 2 diabetes, we have to say that by analyzing the odds ratio. Or how many times frequently the disease burden is uh, occurring among the case group. That is the cohort study, just reverse to the case control study. Now we will introduce, I will introduce you, with you with some common de definition for a study that is needed. One is population. Who are the population? A population is the entire group about which the information is desired. Say, I can tell, uh, tell about the pregnant population. When the pregnant population who are exposed to antenatal care have better outcome than who are infrequent or no user of antenatal care. Here the whole pregnant people are my pregnant population. But I want to see that head engagement of the fetus occurred at term in uh, primary gravity. Um, and their outcome. So here my pregnant population are primary gravida pregnant women, not any other people. So population will differ according to my need, my uh, studies of uh, requirement. And the intergroup about which we are collecting the information or my result will be applied to that population. So population is very important. So before collecting data, we have to go to which on which population are working and then come the for the sample. A sample is a part of population. It is not possible to go to the whole population, population always. So we'll collect the sample. Say in a tertiary level hospital, around 5,000 people are delivered. So it is not possible to get the whole amount of people given by, to include whole amount of respondents in my study. Then I'll have to select the sample. So my sample will collection be such that the sample will be representative on my population. Whether the sample is a small or larger, that is a different issue. How large, how many, that is a very big issue because if I include 
all the 5,000 people in my study, then it will cost huge time, resource, and so on. But if I, I can have this uh, representative sample of only 380 or 500 according to the uh, power, according to the sample size calculation, then I can, I can have a, a result which represent the whole 5,000. So sample collection, sample size measurement, sampling technique, all these are very important. And sample size means the number of persons or sample unit selected from the population of the study that comprise the total size. And it comes from a calculation. So myself, I will say I'll take 1,000 samples, I'll take 200, I'll take 30 samples, no. It depends on sample size calculation and the sample size calculation has its own formula and it depends on the design of the study, whether it is a descriptive analytic, whether it is a, uh, if it is a uh, randomized control trial, how much arms they are, how many population will be there, and then the error, which I, as a researcher, accept. Everything is included in the formulation and then sample size is calculated. So the sample size is not a fixed one for all studies. It, it, will, be, it will depend on so many things. Now the sampling technique. Sampling is a process by which some members of the population is selected as representative of entire population. That is very important that the sample will be a representative one. Let's say among the 5,000 pregnant population, some is 20, some 16, some is 35, some 40. Now from each group, I have to collect, uh, collect samples from 40, from 18, from 20. Otherwise, if I get the whole sample from a 16, that might not be applicable for a 40. So it will be a representative sample of from the entire population. And sampling is very important, whether it is a non-probability sampling or probability sampling. You have to know clearly, you have to, uh, if you are going to be a researcher, you must have some clear understanding about all this. It is, there is no much time. I'm just telling about the approach. During approaching a research study, you must know what type of sampling you are going to do for your research. So non-probability sampling means the probability of each, each unit of sample to be incorporated as my um, uh, my uh, respondents is not uh, similar. It's not equal. There is no equal chance. So then, that those might be purposive sampling, convenient sampling. Purposive sampling means yes, it might be close to yes, a representative sample. And convenience means it's convenient to stand by the side of a mom and to collect data, how frequently people are coming here, that is convenient sample. So commonly we go for purpose sampling, not to convenient one. There may be quota sampling, like certification of uh, um, uh, sample, sample, certification of cluster sample can be collected from different pairs or different trials. Another one is probability sampling, which is more scientific. That 5,000 population, uh, each one have the same possibility to be recruited. So I can have a computer-based 5,000 numbering, and then I tell the computer that please select uh, 500 people for my sample. And if that computer will say, you will collect from the number one case, then you will collect from the number 113, then collect 114, then collect from 130, then go to 2,000 number, like this. So each one can have the probability of to be recruited, equal chance of to be recruited. So it is more representative sample, no biasness there. But in case of purposive sample, I, as a researcher, I have no fund, I have no time. So people who are coming with, uh, who, have, who has come to the outpatient department, I uh, take the history, I take the uh, thing as the respondents, Still, my sample size is completed. Though they are um, they are to be recruited on the choice of inclusion and exclusion criteria. So most probably they are close to the uh, representative sample, but they are not actual. 
So this is a very basic difference between different types of sampling. So probability sampling may be simply random sampling. As, you have to say, uh, as I have said, it can be generated through computer. There may be a stratified sampling because I want to go through the whole Bangladesh. My research topic was uh, the telemedicine use during COVID-19 in Bangladesh. So I am to represent whole Bangladesh. I have to go through the division or go through the districts, but I will not take uh, large, large population. I will take only like uh, 384 samples. So I have to take the stratified samples from each division. There may be systemic sampling, like I will get number one case, number four case, number eight case, like this one, so on, like this. There may be multi stress sampling, there may be cluster sampling, and so on. So, data collection takes it. How long I am collecting the information that is very important. I can use available information from a registered book, I can use the records, observation from interview, from a questionnaire, I can collect data. So then uh, it's also another part that is different instruments to which data are collected. That might be checklist, that might be questionnaire, there may be interview, observation like this. Now the questionnaires which are commonly used to collect information, those might be structured questionnaire or unstructured questionnaire. Structured questionnaire means all possible answers are needed. You say, say I want to see the uh, dietary pattern. Uh, of a, of obese individuals. So I say that um, how frequently you take milk in a day, three times, three to six, six to 12 times, uh, off and on. So the uh, answers are there. And the uh, respondents will just check over the which one is corrected one or the other. Or there may be unexpected, there may be blank space provided for writing answers. So there is some uh, some uh, individuals option. So he or she, she can uh, um, uh, mention about their own choice. There is no predefined answer to this answer. Those are unexpected questions. That is also known as open-ended question. Now, when administered by an interviewer. The data instrument, when the data instrument is administered by an interviewer, then it is called interviewer um, data collection. There may be self administered questionnaire. I'm just giving a sample of question through mail, through message, and say that you please fill up the um, question form. Then it is self administered questionnaire. The patient has responded herself uh, or himself will fill up the uh, questionnaire. So, there is a, um, there is a, um, the, the selected people must, must be some level, have some level of education so that go through the um, questionnaire, they can go through it. Now, at the end, there will be report writing, and I know that on report writing, there are another session. So, in the report writing, it will include all those starting from the title, abstract, then introduction to the uh, topic, methods, material, what was my design, which one is selected out, what was my sample size, who are my study population, what was the sample size, how it was calculated, how sample um, was recruited, all these things, which data uh, uh, collection instrument was used like this. Then what are the results, and the results will be displayed in uh, table forms of graphs, Bar, bar, bar like this. Then we we'll have a discussion, come to the conclusion, and this conclusion is very important. More, most of the time, we we'll see that the, in spite of conclusion of the research, the researcher makes some recommendation. Say, for example, I want to see the uh, nutritional status, outcome of uh, fetal and maternal outcome, along with the nutritional status of a pregnant lady. So I am observing the nutritional status and making the relationship with the maternal and fetal outcome. But the recommendation is that if you come for frequent antenatal checkup, then the outcome will be fine. But I have not gone through how frequently antenatal checkup was done. It was not my objective. My research objective didn't include the number of um, antenatal care 
or I have no emphasis the antenatal care. I don't want to make relationship with maternal and fetal outcome with antenatal care to my study, to this study. So why I am saying that this is my conclusion? The conclusion will be again, depending on my problem, the result which I have obtained from my research, and then I'll make the conclusion because there are objectives. From the specific objectives, I actually meant the specific tasks which I have accommodated for the solution of my research problem. And that that will that will uh, include that will be included in the conclusion. So from the title, from the objectives, from the uh, results, conclusion will be made. And recommendation is another one which I observed in my study, and I think that this might be helpful. Those are the recommendations. And of course, from where I have done the literature review, it is very important. And uh, whether that is the authentic one that is uh, collected from a peer reviewed journal or not, uh, the methods they have selected, everything is important. That's why the references from which I have uh, collected the uh, literature, the differences should be mentioned here. And uh, this is all about the approach um, of uh, research. I think this is just like the initial talk. And you need to know more and more about the research. Otherwise, your problem will not be solved particularly and will not be applied or will not be multiplied. Uh, in the, um, or, or it should not be able to communicate properly with the scientific world with your um, uh, results. Thank you so much. Thank you for your patience here.